Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Indie Book Review, where today I am reviewing The Cyborg Tinkerer by Maglator. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's with the hat? Well, it's a steampunk novel, so, steampunk style, at least with the hat anyway. So, anyway, full disclosure, I didn't like this book, like, at all. There were so many problems with this, with it. I mean, I listened to it on Audible, because, well, buying physical books or buying stuff on Kindle, I, I do that sometimes, but if I can get it on Audible, then I will. But, so, anyway, I listened to it on Audible, and... Mm, let's just get into this, shall we? So, what's this book about? Well, it follows this woman named Gwen Grimm. And with a name like that, you kind of have an idea as to the style of writing of this book. It's pretty minimal. And Gwen is dying. She's got a brain tumor. And... Yeah, that gets mentioned a lot in that first chapter. Gwen's dying. Gwen's dying. Gwen's dying. Oh, did I... By the way, did, did I tell you Gwen, Gwen's dying? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, anyway, she gets approached by this guy from the Cyborg Circus. Because, well, she went and saw a Cyborg Circus... And he found her and pretty much hired her on. She gets a cyborg eye and shit goes downhill like right then and there. There's a tournament to go perform so they can get ten acts to perform for the for the Emperor King of the the star system, the planet planetary system or whatever. And yeah, it just kinda goes from there. It's, it's, it's a whole death game. You know, kind of like Savior's Champion. So, the characters. Gwen. Where do I even start with Gwen? I hated Gwen. Throughout the entire book. Like, I get the first chapter when she really just can't take her mind off the brain cancer. I get it. I'm not gonna knock it for that, but god damn, did you have to be mentioned every two paragraphs? Like, jeez, I get it. Gwen's dying of brain cancer. We don't need to hear about it consistently throughout that first chapter. I think it was even, like, the second chapter, too. You know she's dying. Let's move on. But anyway, when she gets into the cyborg circus, it doesn't get any better. Because, you know, yeah, she's not trained to be a cyborg tinkerer. She's a ship tinkerer. Learning what she's doing, and, you know, we get to figure things out with her and you know all the zany antics of the cyborg circuit cool i'm fine with that well no you get the whole deathmatch thing which uh, but anyway but anyway she ends up in this sort of love triangle with an acrobat and the ringleader and who is she gonna choose I mean, it's pretty obvious she's going to go with both. She's the bisexual character. And in, as, as a sort of a Mary Sue that everybody wants to sleep with and have a sort of relationship with and be friends with. And uh, it was rough. It was hard to get through. But Gwen as a character... Uh, someone slights her even once in just the stupidest and smallest of ways. She's done. She is so done with it. It's like, um, something comes out with, with, with Rara. She finds out Rara's not been entirely honest with her. Well, goddamn, she won't even let Rara explain herself. And when when Rara's like, no, no, like I'm doing, I'm doing this for this and this and this reason, she won't even listen. Hell, the same with Bastion. Bastion basically just explains his past to her. And d despite her asking for, for him to explain his past to her, she's like, oh, that's what you used to do? Yeah, I don't love you anymore. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And she just leaves. And I'm like, really? Really? That's what you're doing with this? What? Oh my gosh, she was just frustrating as hell all the way through this book. Like I yelled at I yelled at the speakers more than a few times, going, God damn it, Gwen, just listen to these people. Like she knows that nobody in the Cyber Circus is particularly innocent. They've all got histories, they've all got shit that they've done wrong. 
but she's so quick to condemn people without ever turning that judgmental eye back toward herself. And that's really hard to to like in terms of a main character. Because, I don't know, she, may, she must see herself as perfect or something. Because God forbid somebody else makes a mistake or have a history of doing something bad and then wanting not to be a part of that history anymore. Like, oh my God. And I think probably one of the worst aspects of Gwen is everything just kind of comes really easily to her. She doesn't really have much in the way of a personal struggle. All of her struggles revolve around either Rora or Bastion, and those are the two that actually have character arcs. Gwen doesn't really have one. She starts off as this really good person and ends as the same person. But she's not really a good person because, like I said, she's really judgmental and she's uh, she doesn't get along with, with people. She's, she's really sassy. She's really blah, 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 blah. It, she's less of a character and just more of a collection of character notes. She doesn't, really, she doesn't accomplish anything. She doesn't really do anything. Her stakes are so low that it's hard to really become invested in what she's doing. Or what is going on in her world. The most I ever really felt for her is when she has to operate on the cyborgs and take their stuff out. Because she has to. Because otherwise she'll get beaten and eventually just lose her cyborg part. Like, it's not particularly interesting. The stakes aren't compelling. And then we get into Rora. Rora probably should have been the main character in this book. She is way more interesting of a character. But even still, she's... She starts, like, her backstory is she's the spoiled rich brat who wanted to be a, an acrobat, but then she broke her wrist. So she joined the cyborg circus and became an acrobat. It's like, yeah, okay. I don't, I, I don't get your issue. I don't get your struggle. I really don't. But Rora's whole story arc is her selfishness. She, like, to join the Cyborg Circus, she cut her own hand off so she can get a new one and join the Cyborg Circus. And she's selfish, and she's using Gwen to get a new hand because the one that she has already is malfunctioning and not that great. So she wants a new hand, despite it being against Circus rules. And I'll get to that a little tidbit later. And, uh, it's just, it's almost high school level drama with Rora and Gwen. <laughs> Between those two. It's high school level drama. And it wasn't, it wasn't interesting to read, and it wasn't fun to read. And now we get into Bastion. And Bastion is anorexic, which is a weird character thing to add on to it. It doesn't really play much in the way of the character like in terms of who he is like sure I guess kind of in a little bit in the way of he doesn't like who he used to be and he's one of the only and he's the only one who's who actually remembers his past and that does get explained but it's a really really lame and stupid uh, explanation but Bastion is probably one of the only characters that I actually really I'm not even going to say really, just even sort of liked. Because he just, he doesn't take Gwen's shit. He refuses to take her shit and will just be like, okay, well then fuck you then. You're, you're going to be like that? Well, fuck you. I'm still going to try and be there for you when you need me. But if, if you're going to be like that, you can deal with that on your own. And I kind of like that. But he's also there for Gwen. Which also made it really, really, really frustrating and kind of pissed me off more and more when she's all like, Can I trust Bastion? Can I trust Bastion? When Bastion is consistently going out of his way to actually be there for her and to rescue her and to help her out of situations and jams. It's like, my God, Gwen. I'm back on the Gwen gripe again because I seriously did not like that character. Bastion is probably the only character that I actually had any sort of like towards. And he was the only one actually kind of deserving of it. And his when he got slighted, he really got slighted. And I really would not have blamed him if he... Actually, I kind of wish he didn't go back to Gwen. 
you know, have her actually suffer some consequences for her actions for once. But anyway, those are the main characters. Let's talk about the world building. This was the stuff that really, really frustrated me. Yeah, the characters were hard to get through, but oh, this world building. Oh, this world building is so, is so bad. Uh, so they've got intergalactic travel on these, wo I, I think they're wooden boats. I think they're described as being wooden boats. They're, they're shaped as naval ships. And I know that's kind of going for a whole treasure planet vibe, which I guess that's fine. It doesn't make any sort of real sense, but whatever, whatever. They have intergalactic travel. For some reason, digital technology does not work. Or at the very least, it only it's very expensive and only really and only really the rich get to use it. I don't understand how that's supposed to work. I don't understand how that's supposed to be a thing. How the hell is how, how, how the hell do you have intergalactic travel on a fairly wide scale because there are several planets and moons that are that that are are habited that have ships coming and going all the time. How do you have intergalactic travel, but have a very minimal technology on all the planets and moons? Like if one or two planets or moons were very low technology, then yeah, I would I would totally understand. Some of them are way more poverty stricken than others, and they have to resort to lower technology in order to survive. Yes. Okay, no issues there. But to have the but to have the entire system be like that makes no sense whatsoever. It doesn't work. Cause some planets are bound to have, you know, stuff on them to actually build up on. A lot of these planets will have things like minerals, they'll have people who can figure out how to work things. Hell, they have people who know how to create cyborgs. Or at least a few people who know how to create cyborgs. They can't figure out how to create a basic microprocessor or how to create digital technology from that? How the hell does that work? It doesn't. The technology just doesn't make any sense. The steampunk aesthetic is just that. It's an aesthetic. It's a background. It's a backdrop. It's kind of like the whole uh, Roman gladiatorial arena thing for the Savers Champion. It doesn't add anything. It's just a backdrop. This book probably would have done way better had it just been, you know, a single planet or, uh, well, yeah, just one planet and a collection of nations. That would have made way more sense and it would have been way, way, way more believable. And, well, it just would have worked way more. All right, let's get on to the cyborgs and how they're supposedly illegal. It's illegal to be a cyborg. Like, if you're already a cyborg, then fine, but you're not allowed to become a cyborg. And the cyborg circus is completely an illegal operation, but yet they consistently pop up in the open all the time. The feds, you know, the feds come in, they tear the place down a little bit, they move on to a new place, they set up, blah, 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 rinse, rinse, lather, repeat, essentially. So the fact that cyborgs are consistently being being created by the circus is a completely illegal operation. And, you know, are punished, it's it's not something that's, you know, gentle. It's punishable by death, like execution style. It's kind of a big deal. So why anybody would, A, choose to be a, be a cyborg in that time you know, like I said, if you're already one, then yeah, okay, it's basically, yeah, it's not a good thing. But if you're all if you're already one by that, by that time, then whatever. But if but becoming one, that's a life, that's a death sentence. And yeah, sure, okay, Gwen was already gonna die. What does she have to lose? But what does the cyborg circus have to gain from that? Especially, you know, with the whole main story of, um, the whole. Death match. I mean, death match. It's not technically a death match, but it is at the same time. Because, well, if an act loses, they get their cyborg parts taken away. And while it's not a death sentence for some, it's a death sentence for an eighth of the people there. Out of 300 performers, an eighth of them rely on the cyborg parts to survive. Yeah. 
and Gwen has to cut into each one of them and remove the cyborg parts if they lose the contests. And my god, why? I can't even count how many ways that that just doesn't work in terms of narrative. Like, the villain's whole plan does not make sense. And even, like, the death matches in general, like, I just... It's hard for me to believe that 300 cyborg performers will just willingly go through this whole thing under the threat of, what, a few officers that are under her control? Yeah, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying it at all. As soon as they found out, yeah, maybe a few of them go through the initial, uh, and go through the initial, uh, test. But after that, I have a hard time believing that they're not going to go all guerrilla warfare on these officers and, and that boss lady. There's no way that they don't, that they wouldn't do that. Oh, you're, you're going to threaten us? <laughs> Fuck you. We're, gonna, we're just going to kill you and keep our cyborg parts. We'll run the circus ourselves. Bastion it seems pretty competent in what he's doing, so we'll just do it that way. Would have made a, would at the very least have made a much more interesting story. But anyway, I could gripe on about this for a long time. I'm not going to. I kind of feel bad for not liking this book because I know Meglator is a nice person, but. I can't give this book a good review. I can't give this book a good score because it just is just not good. And the fact that she gives writing advice means that I actually kind of have to judge this a little harsher than what I would a normal book. Like, I am still trying to keep my criticisms constructive. I am still trying to not be a jerk about things. But sometimes it's really difficult. And with a book like this, I think Meg really would have benefited from having beta readers that aren't friends of hers like, I'm not gonna go as far as to say that I know her beta readers or know who she chose I think they I think she listed them in the back of her book but I think she needed beta readers that were gonna be a little bit more honest a little bit more brutal a little bit harder to please than the people that she got and it's kind of upsetting to think about because this book really had a lot of potential this book had a lot of places that it could have gone but it just didn't and while there were some scenes that I actually was kind of interested in, especially right around the end, even then, it wasn't enough to save the book. I mean, it was enough to not get a 1, get a one out of 10 out of. But it wasn't enough to save the book. It wasn't enough to actually make me care about the characters. It wasn't enough to make me care about what was going on. It was just a couple of interesting scenes. And... Honestly, with how bad the rest of the book is, it kind of drug those scenes down. So honestly, I kind of have to give this book a 2 out of 10. Like, it's just not good. I hate giving a, a review this low, but... I I, ho I really hope Meg looks at the reviews, takes the, criti takes the constructive criticism, and honestly tries to write something a little bit better. I hope the next book in this series is better. I really do. And I'll check it out. I'm not going to give up. At least, not unless the next book is just as bad. But I honestly hope that she takes the criticisms to heart, writes something really... and, and writes something better. Writes, you know, thinks about what was wrong with this book and just creates something a little bit better. I'm still gonna follow like follow her on on YouTube. I'm still gonna follow, you know what what she does because she does give good writing advice. It's just she gives writing advice, and I expect that advice to be followed. I expect that advice to actually create good writing. It's just a personal expectation of mine. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great night.